What's going on guys? Welcome to my tutorial on Adobe Edge Anime. This is preview number 7. A lot of people have been writing me saying they're confused by this software. I'm just going to show you guys some intro stuff that you can learn and it'll let you go through your projects a lot quicker. And I know it sounds a little bit complicated at times when you're working with the software, but just realize that it takes some work to get used to. You'll be on your way in creating these projects simply. So let's come over here and create a new project. Select the canvas color over here and just, I'm going to make it darker. We could change the stage size. The example I'm going to use is say you want to create like a web banner or something. And I'm going to go file import. I'm going to select two images here. Just import them to the stage. Now, a lot of people have been asking me how to create symbols or why would you want to use a symbol. So let's right click on this, convert to symbol. What this symbol allows you to do is just organize your assets a lot better. Let me just call Adobe Easy. Now this is my timeline here. If I decide to create some animation, it will all be on this main timeline. What I want to do is double click on the symbol. Now I can create some animation, but it's just going to be for this symbol and it has its own timeline. So it's a lot more organized. Let me get started with some animation here. I have auto keyframes on here. This allows me to auto add the keyframe when I'm doing animation. So we're going to add one keyframe over here, then move across the timeline. Let's just move this along. And you see that Edge added a keyframe for me. You could do either way, you can manually or you know you could just deselect this and do it on your own. I'm gonna select a trigger, and what a trigger does is that it tells the timeline what to do at a certain point. So right here, what I want the timeline to do is just stop. That way it doesn't repeat itself. So let's press Control T and I can get myself a trigger. Over here on the right hand side we have our options and I'm gonna select stop. Let me close this out and let me press Control Enter to see what happens and it moves pretty fast. If I want to slow this down, all I'm going to do is take this animation here and we can stretch this out, control enter. And you see the logo takes a little bit longer to get into the layout here. Let me double click this and if you want to, let's work with um, some transparency. This is a common thing to do when animating. So we're going to lower the transparency there, bring it to 100 and you see you have a simple transition. Now let's make the button do something. I'm going to come over here and right click on it. So I'm going to open actions and I'm going to select click. And this means that the user can click the mouse and I'm going to select open URL. This is a very familiar task if you work on websites, you want buttons to do things obviously. And we're going to come over here and let it go to my Adobe Easy Tips YouTube channel. Press control enter. and it takes you to my YouTube channel. Now the one thing that this does not have prepackaged is that the mouse turns to a cursor automatically when you use or create a button. So let's do this. Let's come over here, double click on this symbol over here. Select the image. And let's change the cursor. Right now it's set at auto and we want to make it a pointer. So that way when the user goes over this button, they'll know that they're selecting a button and they'll click it. So control enter to test this and turns to a pointer. Now let's get more into the animation and also how to do some simple controls of the actual timeline. Now my timeline is going to start like this. The animations are going on their own and I have this monkey character. Let me convert this to a symbol. Double click on it and I did this in another tutorial but I think this will be helpful for you guys to check out. On the mouse over he's going to do a backflip and we have this over here that controls at 360. We're going to do one for zero and another one for 360. So you see he does a backflip and let's just slow this down. I'm going to take this animation here. I'm just going to move it along right there. Let's create a label called character, control L. We're going to put control T for a stop. That way this animation does not begin. We're going to control this a little bit. On this character, let's open actions. On mouse over, we're going to play character. And let's put that in quotations. So let me go over that one more time on what I just did. The character labels over here. 
I create an action for him. When the person mouse is over, it will play this portion of the timeline called character. Control enter. Let me try this out. You have your logo over here. He does a backflip. Now, if it's a little slow for you, we can have him do this a lot quicker. Now, let's say that we want to make him go somewhere. Let's open actions, select click, open URL, and let's send him to my website. Let's also take this mouse cursor, select a pointer. And he goes to the Adobe Easy website. So you get the idea on how you can actually create some actions, symbols, things like this. What else do we have over here that I want to show you guys? Um, let's talk a little bit about actually publishing this project and how we're going to get it to work. I know a lot of people are confused on how they like get this to your website. So let me just explain something to you. I'm going to press File, Save As. I'm going to save it here in my tutorial folder. Let's call this tutorial. Now I save the project. I have these assets over here. This is my tutorial page. That's what the viewer is going to see. So if it was on my website, adobeeasy.com, it would be forward slash tutorial.html. These are the additional JavaScript files that this file needs to work. We have more JavaScript files in here. So let's come back here and just talk about what you need to publish. Let me move these things into a new folder. These are the files that you need to publish your project. This is the edge includes these three JavaScript files over here your images, and your actual HTML document. We also have published settings in this program. You can set it to target different browsers. So this is a good way also to publish. You can do it either way. What the people at Edge are recommending is that you use something like this. This will tell you if the person can actually view your project. If not, you get an iframe prompt or an overlay, and this way the person can get noticed if they can't view your project. You can also make it static just in case the person can't view the animation. Now, if you have a lot of animation going on, some people might not want to have just a page loading. You can create some kind of preloader here. You come over here to preloader, insert, and then let's do control enter. And you saw it pretty quickly, but you see that little circle? Some people might want to add shapes or, you know, text to their layout here. I'm going to use this text tool. And let me just type in Adobe Easy Tips. We can select different colors for this text. You know, you can do things like center the text. Increase the size. They have different fonts over here if you want to use a different font. Pretty standard stuff when you're working with some text in a program like Edge. This is all web-based fonts. If you want to add shapes, you can add shapes. I mean, these are very simple things you can try out in Edge. But you guys will let me know if you have any questions. I know a lot of people are just confused by all this stuff. And again, if you're confused with what's going on in Edge, post your question or come to the fan page and ask me. But this is a very simple introductory tutorial to Adobe Edge. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Cheers.